And later, we go live to our reporter on the ground, Buster Printman, who's eagerly awaiting the... Hello and welcome back to part 7 of A Change in Course, with me, Dan Robinson McSnow. Previously in this historical series, we delved into the beginning of the conflict and of Britain's vast naval power and the oil crisis which saw most of it docked within two weeks of setting sail. We also looked into the North African campaign and at Britain's loss of Egypt and the Suez, with her leadership neglecting to send forces to the continent as they forgot about Africa. And last time we saw the Allies finally taking back the fight to the Germans, with the 14th attempt at the D-Day landings finally succeeding at Brest. Today we continue that campaign as the Allied advance slows towards the Maginot Line. It's July 1942 and both sides are locked in stalemate, with Allied forces throwing themselves against German bunker defences repeatedly, stopping only to reorganise before starting another costly attack. Well, after wandering up and down the front line randomly for a while, uh, we began the attack. Of course, our losses were huge, naturally, but we didn't stop trying. Uh, however, just as we thought we were about to break through, uh, those bastards brought another division into the area, which didn't stop us trying, you understand? Sadly. The British were keen to show any potential allies that they were on the offensive, as invitations to join the faction were spammed out every two weeks to the USA, who were sadly too busy focusing on their theatre in the Pacific. Little did they know the Japanese were far too deep building an empire in China that nobody would care about until it was literally shitting massive and too late to do much about. Meanwhile, back on the Western Front, the Germans launched a surprise offensive through the Ardennes, the name of which would echo through history. This is the Battle of the Blob, their target, the port of Antwerp. The only thing standing in their way, a tired force of British soldiers running a deficit of 100,000 infantry equipment. Just as the Germans gain momentum, however, they make the biggest mistake of the war to date. They attack the Soviet Union. This seemed to take the USSR completely by surprise, as they then misclicked and declared a war against Finland in accidental retaliation. It's at this point that the British deeply regretted the invitations to the Allies it had spammed worldwide, as the Finns quickly accepted. And thus the Allies were thrust into a, another war against the Soviet Union. This historic moment, which kick-started a huge three-way war, was summarised perfectly by Prime Minister Winston Churchill's famous quote, Shit, that escalated quickly. By this stage, the war, and indeed the entire world, was considered a total mess, and calls were made to restart the game. It was at this point that Rudolf Hess took his famous flight across the Channel to try and broker a peace deal with the United Kingdom. He was deemed unsuccessful, however, as he was scattered over three counties after being intercepted by British ground fire. This signalled the beginning of the end for the Third Reich. With their armies divided, Allied forces soon pushed through to Berlin, ending a small part of the Second World War. It was at this point a huge peace conference was held here at this famous place. It was that window there actually, two in from the left. And the country divided by the victors, with the Russians taking swathes of Europe, with Britain deciding to solidify gains in... Africa. The Red Army then swept west, invading England after landing successfully at Dover. Why was it undefended? That point still puzzles historians to this day. This is where the largest and most infamous tank battle of the Second World War took place. It's the 5th of July 1943, Operation Citadel, the Russian offensive, the Battle of Cambridge. This monument is all the remains of the battle site, a once unorganised mess of a front line. I'm now joining a team of young archaeologists who are excavating the battle site. What do you make of the place, Alexander? Well, what we believe it to be is an anti-tank gun pit. Wow. What that is, is a pit with a gun in it that's anti-tank in nature. Well, and have you found any artefacts from your dig so far? Well, we found a bunch of old coins. Well, that's about it, really. We're still looking for pottery. Brilliant. Yes, the British could do little to stop the Russian frontline-wide spam of 40 width divisions. And by this stage, both of the British armoured divisions had suffered heavy losses and had to rely on bicycles, horses and even then these Bob Semple tanks from New Zealand. Needless to say, the correct decision was made when bicycles were utilised first in small-scale skirmishing actions. 
But by this stage, it was too late. The Russians had already captured the unlikely but critical victory point of Plymouth, thus winning the war. The British Empire was then puppeted, ushering in a, a new era of peace and prosperity for its people. The next three parts of this remarkable series will be presented by a new historian, as I'm voluntarily stepping down from my post, following my plea of guilty at show trial by the state for falsifying historical records. Join us next time for... What a... Morning, Ginger. How's the tunnel coming along? It's slow going, sir. They almost caught us last night. We've got to bust out of here soon, Ginger. But how, sir? Jerry's got this place locked up tight. Right. Come by my cell later tonight. I've got something you might want to take a look at. Crikey, sir. What's that? Well, it's going to be a glider. No, sir. That. Oh! I'm just using the Great Courses Plus to escape this wretched POW camp. How does it work, sir? Well, it's lift, thrust and courage, mostly. No, sir. The Great Courses Plus. Oh, come on, Ginger. It's quite simple. It's an online video learning service where you can enjoy lectures from top-notch professors from all over the world. Even German ones. Now, steady on, sir. There's a course for everything you could need. For example, to bust out of here tonight, I'm using Fundamentals of Flight. Halt! Was ist das? They've busted us, Ginger. Oh, das ist die Great Courses Plus. Ich liebe das Great Courses Plus. Yes, and as of right now, the Great Courses Plus is giving away a free trial, isn't it? Mm -hmm. And all they have to do is go to thegreatcoursesplus.com slash squire. They even have courses in learning German, if you're interested. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. yeah. All right, Ginger, let's go. Ooh, they have one on Hitler! Yep. Get in the car, get in the car! <laughs> oh! Oh! <laughs> so I'm coming. Do you think oh. we got away with it? No! Not even a little bit! That's the wrong... Where, where's focus? It's the one in front. Oh, they're gonna think of a speed catching them or something. Yep. Oh god, okay. Oh, you want to speed caught by me, would you? Was <laughs> dumb. What's this down? Speeding. Gemacht. Oh god, my camera works bad. And, oh, this was a nightmare. People are gonna think we're actually filming them. We're gonna yeah, think we're Nazis. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I hate to say it. You, you have got the... Uh, hang on, you have got the look.